guys, it's been a while since I made a video and that's kind of what this video is about because I think a lot of my self-worth and value as an artist and as a person is tied to how productive I am as a creative and that's probably not good. That's what the video is about. I'm gonna go through my, my thought process as an artist when I feel like I haven't been productive in a certain season. And the first thing that goes through my head is, Houston, don't give in to this capitalist expectation to constantly churn out content and create things at all times. That's not how humans were meant to function and that's not how you're meant to function. And it's true, like the idea that every second of our lives should be spent churning out content for the algorithm to build up our personal portfolio and resume so that we feel good about ourselves and our time and use it wisely is built around this capitalist idea of time as money. But then the other thing that goes through my head is how many artists excuse themselves from actually creating art Art by giving that justification of, oh, I don't want to give in to the capitalist expectations to create things. Like, no, if you're an artist, that means you're a person who creates art. And if you're not creating art, then you're not an artist. At least that's what my brain tells me, I think. What makes me an artist, really, if I don't actually have the personal willpower to use my time to consistently create art? I mean, how pathetic would it be to be an aspiring filmmaker your whole life and not actually just be a filmmaker? And I don't mean that in the sense of like, oh, you're only a real filmmaker if you're working in Hollywood or something like that. No, you can be a real filmmaker making movies on your iPhone. But I guess the difference is that being an aspiring artist and being an artist are not the same thing. I guess a lot of the inspiration for this video comes from the fact that I've just felt really unworthy and unproductive as an artist in the past six months. And I don't know what to make of that or what has caused that block or if I really even have been unproductive. You know, like sometimes you have to figure out if it's in your head or not. It's been present even in small things though, where it's like on my Patreon, every month I'm supposed to do a ramble where people vote on a topic for me to talk about and then I record an audio review ramble discussion about that topic. And every time I turn on the microphone in the past few months, I just can't seem to talk about stuff. Like it's like my energy isn't even there. And I go, am I a bad patron? Am I a bad artist? Well, what's going on? And then there are times that I've had to remind myself that I have made things and I am making things. And in fact, I've been making things this year. My wife and I went to England this summer and made a documentary from the middle of May to the middle of August, pretty much filming every single day. And now we have nearly a hundred hours of footage. So I guess, we did do something, but the project isn't finished yet. It's in post-production, and so it doesn't really feel real to me. Not real like it would when it's released. But then even when it's released, I know that eventually I'll think of it as a thing I did in the olden days when I used to be productive. I think that idea of like the golden days when I used to make good stuff is definitely a play in my head too, you know? Like sometimes I look back at my older videos and I go, how did I ever find the time or willpower to make an hour long video about Avengers Infinity War, especially while I was still in school? How did I do that? And I look at the script and I go, I don't even know if I could write that today. Obviously there are other days when I look back at some of the stuff I've made and go, ah, this is terrible. Have I ever made a single good thing in my life? <laughs> but I like to think that those days are getting a little bit less common as I learn to be a bit more objective and see the good and the bad of the stuff I've done. Either way though, at every season of my life, I've always I always found myself looking back at the previous season and going, how was I ever so productive as an artist back then? I don't have any energy or art or talent now. There was a three year period in middle school where I did nothing with my free time but write a 600 page fantasy novel. And looking back, I have no idea how I had the time or motivation or energy or creativity to do that. But then again, right now I'm working on multiple documentary projects, aren't I? So like, Maybe the creative output hasn't changed. Maybe the creative process hasn't changed. Maybe I've just forgotten how hard and boring it was back when I was doing it. You know, I mean, I can look back at that fantasy novel writing process and see it as a breeze, but maybe it wasn't a breeze. Maybe things like that only seem like a breeze after you've completed them. Maybe part of it is also, I don't know if this is a tip or an observation or what, but uh, maybe part of it is figuring out what type of artist you are and making peace with that, you know, like, I've always dreamed of being the type of artist who could consistently make stuff. Like every week I would make a YouTube video and post weekly consistently for a long period of time. But I don't think that's the type of artist that I am. I've never been able to operate that way and I don't know why I keep holding myself to that standard. 
I think maybe I'm the type of person who makes long, big projects and takes a while to do them. And maybe I'm kind of missing an action in that process, but then I release it and it's really gratifying. The lingering question for me, of course, is has anything actually changed that would alter my creative output in these past few years? You know, I mean, there were periods in my life where I was more consistent with YouTube videos, where I did, I think, make things on a more regular basis. And now it just seems to take me longer. Certainly social media could be at play. I mean, it's very distracting and it's done nothing but get more prominent. My ADHD could also be a thing. And then there's the fact that I now have more real adult responsibilities than I did when I was writing my fantasy novel in middle school. I mean, I really feel like when I was a kid, I was just so much better at hyper-focusing on one thing and nailing that thing and getting it done without anything interfering. But maybe that's just because I was in middle school and I didn't have much else to do. I don't know. I mean, I guess things have been a little crazy since the pandemic for me and for everybody. Like I reunited with my long distance girlfriend during the pandemic and then we got married and then I was working on another documentary and then we went to England for the summer and worked on a different documentary and now we're here and we got married again. So, I mean, it has been a lot. Maybe now that all this crazy stuff has passed, I'll have more time for like consistent rhythms and weekly uploads and gratification. Or maybe I should make peace with the fact that I don't do consistent weekly uploads. I don't know. I hope this doesn't feel like a pity party or something like that, because I don't want it to be that. I was hoping that it would come across like an artist processing how to feel about being an artist and maybe you could relate, I don't know. I mean, I have to wonder, do most artists feel this way? Do most artists feel like they're not actually creating things until they release the thing and then they feel like they didn't create that thing and it was another version of them that created it and now they are not capable of making that thing, you know? Do most writers usually spend their days pacing around their office and not really writing anything? Or do most writers write all day? Is that a thing that people do? Every time I watch an inspirational video about waking up at 5 a.m. to be productive and make things, I'm like, oh, I wish I had that life, but it never seems to work. And yet, I guess I'm making something right now, right? I wrote the notes for this video last night after trying and failing to write three other things that I've been wanting to write, and I was just so annoyed that I couldn't be productive that I wrote this, and this just flowed really naturally. And maybe that's part of it, is like, when I'm really feeling the juice, I should write that thing instead of the other thing. But then maybe it's not good to be an impulsive writer. Maybe it's not good to be driven by being in the mood for it all the time. Maybe you need consistent rhythms no matter whether you're in the mood or not. There's only so much self-care and unproductivity that I can take before I just start to feel guilty about not making things. And maybe that's the capitalism in me telling me that I should feel guilty whenever I'm not making something. But there's also a very real sense in which Scrolling through Twitter is not rest. It's not self-care, you know? Rest requires consistency and structure just as much as work does. All freedom with no form is not rest. I will say this though, and maybe this is an oddly specific example, but I hope it's sort of helpful. Uh, after my wife and I made our documentary this summer, when we completed filming, we were gonna stay in England one more week, but we didn't have a place to stay. And so we stayed with a friend of a friend who was this kindly old British lady named Trisha who lived in a cottage in the English countryside. And for that week after we finished filming, we had planned to actually do some extra interviews and to be really productive and to finally do some of the other things that had been our to on our to-do list. But we just crashed. We just stayed in her upstairs guest room and we watched Netflix and we hung out and we didn't do anything. And we felt so guilty. And there were a few times during the week when we were staying at her house that Trisha asked us, do you have any plans for the week? Are you planning to do any other interviews? Do you have anything on the plate tomorrow? And we sort of bashfully, guiltily told her, I think we maybe need one more day to just do nothing and then we might do something the next day. I don't know. And we were very ashamed of that. And every single time, Trisha just said to us, well, it makes sense that you're tired. I mean, you've been making a documentary all summer. I've seen how heavy that camera equipment is. Of course you're tired. Stay up there as long as you want. And Trisha was herself a really successful professional photographer in her younger years, and she was still an artist. And she didn't strike me as the type of person who would always be telling you that you should rest or always tell, the, tell you that you should be content with being unproductive. But she also was the kind of person who saw that we were tired and that we'd made something all summer and that we should be proud of that, and that maybe we needed to just take a nap. And I was really thankful for that, and I think I'm not that kind to myself in normal life.
And even saying those words makes me feel ugh, like kind to yourself. I don't know. Like, I don't think I should be kind to myself. You know, I mean, I'm so lazy. I don't make things the way that I should. I should make more stuff. I should be more productive as an artist. But maybe I should also be kind to myself. I don't know. Maybe there's room for both. Maybe it's possible to hold yourself to a standard of consistency and try to actually make things instead of just talking about making them. But maybe it's important also to look at the stuff that you have made and remember that you made that, not someone else. And remember the things that you are making and keep making those things while allowing yourself to rest and really truly rest, not rest by scrolling through Twitter. I don't know. I, I still don't feel great about it. You know, I still feel like I'm not doing anything. I still feel like, I mean, the last video that I uploaded on this channel was in May. I should have made stuff between then and now, but I also had important stuff on my plate and I did make things during that time. And even if I didn't, I think I'd still be an artist just by the way that I look at the world, I think. So I think that's this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful for you. I do feel 10% more dignity and self-worth by the fact that I've just finished recording a video that I can post. And maybe that's not good. Maybe my self-worth should stay the same no matter whether I record a video or not. But I'm just trying to be honest with you and maybe that's all any of us can be. So yeah, um, feel free to share your experiences in the comments and maybe we can help each other out as artists and be kind to each other and be kind to ourselves even when it feels like we don't deserve it. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.